So hi, everybody, and welcome to this second call of um, when the world is going totally crazy. And um, it was a great call last time, and uh, we have not shared it, and we will not share it. We would like to keep that one um, private for now. And uh, this one is going to, uh, we're recording it, and we will put it on uh, YouTube. And uh, I hope that's okay with you guys. And uh, the other thing is that, um, I will not be able to pod and pop you guys um, if you're in access consciousness in order to order access consciousness. And if it's longer facilitations instead of just shorter questions, then uh, I will ask you to send a message or just register directly on my website for a private facilitation. So having said that, it's lovely to see so many of you here. And um, and um, what was I going to say? Let's. Where are we going today? What would you like to know? We did quite a lot last time, and I wonder where you guys are in, and uh, what you would like to talk about. So, if you want, you can also you can either raise your hand or just come on the, you know, um, switch on your microphones, and uh, tell us, or you can go in the chat and. Um, and uh, and 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 write just a word like relationships or money or whatever it is, uh, parenting or uh, you know I don't know panicking I don't know whatever you want, or you can also in the chat select a thing that is um, called uh, next to where you write the message you choose um, you choose uh, do -do 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 who do you choose. Um, Yula Gooding, uh, Gudenkova, and you send it as a private message to her, so you will remain anonymous with your question if that's what you desire. I hope that's clear, and uh, let's start. Please let us know, let us know, let us know what you desire from me today. I'm willing to give you whatever you want. Okay. I'll start and see where we go. Have you noticed that uh, the last few days, even the last couple of days since we did last call, uh, things have been getting very, very fucking intense? Well, I realized that, and it was like that. And uh, I don't know if you believe in astrology or the planets and all of that. I do. But uh, yesterday, Yulia, when I was freaking out at some point because of some insanity that I had, she reminded me that... Um, you know, it's a full moon and there's uh, there's been a lunar eclipse uh, that I actually saw and that affects us as well. And then my brother also reminded me that uh, there's uh, two planets that are creating havoc between them. And uh, so there's a lot of people that are freaking out right now. And uh, because of these two planets that are aligned, uh, aligned giving a really strange energy on planet Earth. And he said that there are also other planets that are contributing to us. So I don't know how long this will last, but I hope it's uh, it goes away at the speed of space with total ease. So uh, I would love if you guys actually were coming on camera so I can see you like you can see me. Uh, and also because I'm going to ask you a question now, if uh, uh, no, I didn't say switch off your camera, I said come on camera. <laughs> the only person that was on camera switched her camera off. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. And um, I just have my translator with the camera on and everybody else is off. <laughs> bad ladies, bad ladies. <laughs> I started talking. How about you? I mean, I can go silent for 45 minutes an hour if you want me to do that. But I don't think that will contribute very much. And me giving a monologue. I can do that, not in a Zoom, but just doing a video and posting it, if that's what I want to do. Right now, I would like to have a conversation, and there's no stupid questions. Just go. The first thing that comes, don't think, just the first thing that comes in your head, just go with it and ask a question, or just say what topic you would like to talk about. Well, Andrea, I will be first. <laughs> Yes. Uh, could we uh, speak more about relationship? I don't know what's like, it's well, there's not a question, but uh, just I would like to speak a little bit about relationship. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. what are relationships with you? 
What? What are relationships for you? A good question, because uh, every time when I think about it, I have no answer. Like, you know, it's like um, clean, like just a space with uh, a lot of points of view, which I don't mind. Yeah. And uh, yes, and I, I feel like I kind of lost over there and I, I'll translate and we continue. Okay. translated okay so uh i managed to forget it where were we <laughs> that's me being in 10 second increments my question to you is how many points of views of other people are you buying into and judgments and rejections and projections when it comes to relationships do they have to be in a certain way do they have to um you know function according to this reality that uh, you have to have a honeymoon period after which you're not lovers anymore you're just uh, two people living under the same roof and all of that bullshit so everything that brought up can we please destroy and create it all thanks a gazillion <laughs> well i was not supposed to say that oops And what else? What comes up for you soon? I mean, now. Uh, actually, that uh, I'm avoiding. Like, you're avoiding I, relationships because of that. Yes. Cool. Cool. So. Um, okay. Yes, because the thing is. Oh, I lost you. I can't hear you. The audio went. So I just uh, ran from one uh, room to another because uh, I'm here with uh, a child and oh, a dog and they, ah. they're running after me. Okay. Wait, what are you doing with a child and a dog? You're not in a relationship. <laughs> you already managed to get a child since we last met a couple of months ago <laughs> that's a speed of space you have to tell Yuli about that one <laughs> and me she just told me that she loves me oh my god it's my uh, friend's child that's oh. mine oh. That's cute. Can I tell you a personal story? When uh, Yulia and I met and uh, we were being good friends and, our start, and then our relationship started online to start with. And um, no, I did, I did not meet Yulia online. We kept our conversations going online afterwards. But uh, we both were just coming out of two divorces you know and um we both said i'm not looking for well at least i said i don't want a relationship anymore and i was really there i was not willing to have a relationship because i thought that i was burnt after the two first marriages and i did not want to go there again and then we kept on talking and uh and the idea of being in a relationship creating a relationship different from what we had before both her and me with our experiences um felt super light so we managed to change our point of view and i'm so grateful we did that because 
what we're doing now is creating a relationship in a completely different way. And I'm not saying this is a recipe. This is what's working for us right now. But uh, we choose to be completely uh, transparent, honest and vulnerable with each other, honoring each other and um, and not hiding anything, basically. So um, uh, that makes it work, even though at times it gets incredibly intense. We argue with each other. And I'm going to tell you another story. I don't know if Yulia allows me, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Yulia, the last week that I was in Bali, uh, during a very heated conversation in a taxi, we were going to a place to do um, a music uh, meditation kind of uh, event. And um, uh, so the discussion carried on in this taxi. And we were going there. And uh, Yulia was with our uh, best friend, Anna. And uh, we start shouting at each other. And at one point, Yulia actually slaps me in the face really hard. At which point, I mean, I've never had that done before to me, ever. Not even from my parents. <laughs> so my reaction to grab Yulia by the hands, by the arms, and just shout at her, you don't ever do that to me again. No one stand up to me again. You do that with me and it's done. It's finished. Don't you dare. And having said that, the car was still, the taxi was still driving. I opened the, the door while in motion, while the car was moving. And I jump out of the car. Real drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> and I ordered directly another taxi with the thought that I was going to go back to the hotel and forget all about the evening that we had planned together. And uh, while I was waiting for my taxi, I was thinking, hold on a second, what did actually Yulia mean with slapping me in the face? Because when, just after she slapped me in the face, she said she was smiling. She said, finally, there's a man in this car that actually shows that he's powerful and potent. And I thought about those words when I was waiting for the next taxi, and I thought... Was she making fun of me? Was she trying to provoke me even more? Or was she actually trying to wake me up from behaving like a baby, like a spoiled little kid that is making himself smaller and is not being a man? And uh, so I decided not to go back to the hotel. I decided to go to the place where the event was, you know, and looking for Yulia and Anna. And this place is big, it's massive. So I go around one time, I don't see them. And they left before me, of course. So I thought they would be there before me. And uh, I go around a second time and look everywhere, still don't find them. So I'm saying to myself, okay, I'll order a cab and uh, I'll go to the hotel because you, maybe Yulia got so upset that she chose to cancel this and go back to the hotel. Um, I don't know what's happening. and. So, but I'll take one last round just in case. And I take one last round and I see Yulia and Anna from the back. So I go up to Yulia and tap her on the shoulder and I don't say anything. And she looks at me and she smiles and super happy. She said, I knew you would come here. And I started laughing. So everything that we buy as something that is wrong, like slapping somebody in the face, that might, in this reality, is just mean and vicious and not should be done and blah, blah, blah. But that was an act of actual kindness that I received of actually making me become the man that I am. Man of the house, as I say to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was grateful, and I'm still very grateful for that, because for me, it was a leap in my personal development. So... Andre, uh, could yes. you please wait a minute? Uh, the child is crying, so I need of to like course. to talk. Uh, the girl is crying, which with whom I am right now, so I need to like talk with her a little bit. Yeah. So one one minute. Okay. Everybody, sorry for the pause. I'm going to pause the recording until Julia is ready again. There. Okay, cool. So you were just about to say something, I think. 
even I wanted if I wanted to say something, I don't remember what. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say something as well, and it's everywhere you go into that certain things are right and other things are wrong. Some things are vicious when they're actually kind. Some things destroy when they actually are creating way greater than you could ever imagine. Um, just let it go. Please let it go. Or be willing to change your point of view because your point of view creates your reality. Your reality does not create your point of view. So if you have the point of view that this is going to destroy, it will destroy with the story of the taxi and Yulia, I could have stayed in my point of view of like, she's being mean and she's judging me and she's just, you know, being horrible to me. But I chose to change my point of view and look at another point of view, which is actually was Yulia's point of view of creating something greater, of at least trying to wake, make, me, make me wake up. And, uh, and that was a massive contribution. That was really a massive contribution. So are you willing to to change your point of view or are you actually stuck in your point of view all the time because you want to be right all the time and you don't want to be free so do you want to be because if you're willing to change your point of view you actually get free from the judgments from the bullshit that all that brings up yes <laughs> Does that help? Was that a contribution? Cool. You want to talk more about relationships? You have more questions about it now that we've gone quite a bit of the way? Oh, I have another thing to ask you. Are you willing to follow your knowing when it feels super light to actually enter a relationship with somebody? And ask the same questions as you should ask uh, to create something easier for you just before you have sex with somebody, even if it's a one night stand. So will it be easy? Will they be kind? Will they be grateful? Will they make me money? And I'll explain that in a minute. And um, I forgot the last one. Oops. Anyway, the will they make me money doesn't actually think that they're going to give you cash. It could mean that they contribute in a way that is not related to money, but that gives you the freedom and the space for you to actually create your own money, which actually empowers you to have your own economy, not being dependent on anybody, not anybody. So ask those questions. If it feels light, are you willing to follow your energy rather than going into all the conclusions that you have about a relationship and also and the points of views and also are you willing to if you're going to create something really different of uh, going through moments that are very uncomfortable very intense probably for you both maybe you start shouting at each other or whatever but they're going to create greater and how you do it it's up to you I just said what works for Yulia and myself, and it does create a lot. We just had a big discussion today, and that opened up a whole diff different space. And uh, when we finally spoke in order to look at things and how we can change or what we can do, and it's not a thing of compromise. It's actually looking at, would that, this, this change work for you? Mm -hmm. Actually, yes. And how about this change? Well, actually, yes. And that change, no, that doesn't work for me. What works for you? You know, so being vulnerable and being open to actually discuss and looking at all the possibilities rather than going into the polar universe of uh, right or wrong is this choice or that choice when there actually is infinite choices, infinite possibilities. There's so many ways of solving them, something. There's a book that uh, Yulia and I are reading at the moment. Let me try and find it because I would like to recommend it to you. It's actually very good. Um, and it's called Fight Right, as in fight, fighting, right, as in right and wrong. I'll show you the cover, if I can. This is, no, it's gone straight into the thing. Oh, 
Anyway, fight right. I'm going to write it in the chat so you have it at least in English. And uh, you can find it uh, on uh, Amazon or other websites. And uh, I bought actually the digital version because then I can read it even if I'm at the beach or even if I'm uh, somewhere where I don't have the book or whatever. Uh, it's just more practical for me. And um, it actually goes faster, I notice, for me to read from my phone than to actually read a book. Don't know why, but um, that's what works for me. <laughs> and you can also download an audio version. I don't know if the audio version is translated to Russian, uh, but um, the other versions, I'm pretty sure that they are available in Russian as well. I have not finished reading the book, and nor has Yulia, so I cannot promise, you know, how it ends, but it's going in a very, very good direction. So, um, what is stopping you, Yulia, from choosing a relationship, and what's actually stopping you from not choosing a relationship? Because you don't have to be a in a relationship. I mean, I chose to be in a relationship with Yulia because I got that we would be a contribution to each other. We would both be as crazy motherfuckers as we are, but in a good way. And uh, and I got that it would create greater for both of us together and individually. And I got that we would have each other's back, which we do. Without that, I would not choose a relationship. With a person that judges me, I would definitely not choose a relationship. You know, when you uh, like talk about uh, like relationship and your situation, um, the situation with Yulia, I realized like after like I breathe out after this epic situation, yeah. I realized that every time uh, when like something around relationships going on, I I've been distracted. I create everything to distract myself, to create a lot of stuff, a lot of different things, good and like good and bad, uh, but not to go to relationship, like to like rid of them. And uh, one moment, I translate. Yeah. I translate. And please do not judge yourself because uh, I do that as well. I still do that with Yulia. That's what the whole argument yesterday was about. About me going into right and wrong, about me freaking out, about me using all the distractor implants that exist in order to make the relationship this tiny. Rather than actually breathing, and uh, taking some time for myself. And like Yuda said, before we have these type of conversations, can you please do some meditation or talk to somebody else or whatever, because this is very heavy for me. And she's right. She's totally right. So can you please take that advice for you as well? When you go into that freak out mode that you're going into your head, because that's exactly what we're doing when we go there. We're just mentally masturbating. That's another good idea. You could actually go and masturbate rather than actually mental masturbating, way more fun and way easier and way lighter. <laughs> so um, don't judge yourself, breathe, meditate, relax, and ask yourself, who the hell does this belong to? Is this actually mine? And let it go, because most probably, it's not yours because you're so aware. We are also aware that our antennas are like this long and way more powerful than our mobile phones. And we hear everything that everybody else around us and in the whole planet is actually 
thinking or saying or going through. Having said that, the other night when the tragedy happened in Moscow, and it was about the same time, I was getting on my motorbike to go and meet my brother for dinner. And I was fine until I got to the motorbike. And then this whole really intense sadness came into me. I just wanted to cry and I didn't know why. I thought it was because of stress. It was whatever it was, but it wasn't because I was asking myself questions. Is it that? No. Is it that? No. Is it that? So what the hell is it? And then afterwards, after the dinner, I find out what happened in Russia. And that, then I realize, wow, am I actually so aware that I was into that energy? And not cognitively, but I knew that something was going on somewhere on the planet. And I had a similar episode several years ago when my brother's boyfriend was still alive. And I was feeling like shit one night, really like shit. And I spoke to my brother and his boyfriend was there. And his boyfriend, he was not doing access consciousness, but his boyfriend said, well, was he maybe aware of this massive earthquake that killed hundreds, maybe thousands of people last night? And first I didn't want to believe it. Then I started doing X and I was like, wow, if I'm that aware, which I am, we're all psychic, then most probably that's what I was perceiving. Does that make sense, Julia? Cool. So just basically come back into you, which means get out of your mind. Don't let your mind control you. Your mind is just a byproduct of everything you've heard from everybody since you were born, basically. So none of your thoughts, feelings, or emotions are actually yours. They've been put into your mind and you think that that's really the reality. Because when you're a young child or a baby even, you don't have any of those points of view. You don't judge anybody. You just want to play and have fun and enjoy this planet. That's why we came on to this planet, to enjoy. So just that is, you know, I don't like the word proof, but it's proof enough that all these thoughts, feelings and emotions are not actually ours. Julia, you froze. I don't know if you just froze or if it's me that's being frozen. Could you say something? I think we lost Julia for a second. She's maybe trying to come back, so I'm going to pause the recording again. I'm sorry, guys. She's having an internet problem. There. We're on. Where was I or where were you? I can't even remember who was talking. Me either. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. This call is going everywhere. So... Uh, what um, or who does not want us to have this conversation right now or is not willing to receive it and everything that brought up? Yeah. And I can't even remember where we got into with the conversation. But um, you did you have more questions about relationships or are you clear now? Uh, not really clear, but something changed, and uh, I just be with it, and uh, we see what's what's what will be next. Yes, and feel free to call me at any time. You know that you can just reach out to me and say, "Hey, can I chat? Can we chat?" And uh, if something comes during the call as well, please, you know, feel free to say it and and voice it. Um, and uh, otherwise. Try and close your eyes uh, for 10 seconds and then open your mouth and start talking with whatever shows up. We well, can try that. And if nothing shows up, that's fine too. So 
Is there anything showing up? Julia, have we lost you again? It seems like she's frozen again. Her audio switched off. Hmm. Yeah, really interesting energy. I'm here. Oh. I hope so. Okay, now you're back. Yes. And thank you, Masha, for saying interesting energy and what else is possible, truly. There's something that uh, doesn't want to be said that I actually think is a contribution to all of us here, unless some of you people are not willing to receive it, and that's fine too. So was there anything that came up for you, Yulia? Maria said, uh, uh, Julia and your question about relationship broke in their internet connection. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, there's some things being uh, written in the chat, both by Masha and by, I oh, know, it's just Masha. Okay, cool. So no questions in the chat. So what would you ladies like to talk about? Any other topics? Would you like to talk about money? Would you like to talk about uh, sex? Would you like to talk about um, relationships with, with your children? Would you like to talk about, there's a million topics. So you choose. And I see that it's already uh, 10 to 5, so we're almost done with the call. So unless somebody, oh, we have a question. Can I have that translated, please? The only thing I can read is cuck. So what? <laughs> How to earn more money? There is a question in the chat. How to earn more money. Good question. Uh, if you're panicking about not receiving enough money, and I mean panicking, and if you if don't want to receive money, by that I mean you just want to have money and you have all the expectations that it's going to show up now and you're demanding it, well, what if you had a relationship with money that is similar to a relationship with a lover? If you were expecting and demanding of a lover to actually provide you money every month, would that be creating a yummy energy between you two rather than going, hey, I would desire that. Would it work for you? Can we make it work somehow? You know, I'll take care of other things, but you earn the money. And then it's up to the guy or the lady to say, yeah, that would work for me. Or no, that wouldn't work for me. There's Even there, there's a million choices. So whenever you're expecting money to come in, it will not come in. And also, when you go into that energy, what you're saying is that I need money. I want money. I don't have enough money. And the universe, the only thing that it hears is um, I'm lacking money. And it will always give you what you say. So basically, if you say, I don't want money, is giving you more of not having money. I'm lacking money is giving you more lack of money. 
If you say, I want money, want also means lack. So again, it means I lack money. So first of all, you get have to get out of that mindset and go into the mindset rather of having a relationship with money. There is a great um, book from Access Consciousness called How to Become Money Workbook. Yuli and I have been facilitating the book club for this uh, a couple of times, and I would love us to facilitate it again because both Yuli and I really enjoy that. And it always creates so much because every time that we read the book, we discover something new. Something that we think that we never read before, except that we had read it before, but it just we were not willing to actually process it or even go there. So we dismissed it totally. And uh, so I would strongly recommend that because that gives you a different perspective on actually how to be money and not receive money or earn money or whatever. And everywhere you're going that you have to earn money with hard work. Are you willing to change your point of view about that as well? Or that you have to wait for your old aunt to die to give you a shitloads of money in uh, inheritance? You know, it's like, yeah, it's changing your point of view about money. That's what it's about. And it's not just changing your point of view. You have to also be willing to put in the work that is required. And it's not hard work, it's work. You have to get things in action. You have to take action. I told you the other day that I'm in a period where I don't have much money. And I maybe solved that. I might have solved that already. So keeping this journey with me, and I will be sharing this journey with me about this, if you would like that, in the following calls of this. Because I get that, and Masha also told me this yesterday, I get that this, these calls are going in another direction. And already today, they went in another direction, talking about relationships. So uh, I have a suggestion to make now, actually. If you would like, for the following calls, we could have a different subject on a different topic each time. Or the first one that asked me a question, we go on to that subject for the rest of the calls and allow it to change. And in between that, I will actually share what's going on with me in this process of starting to, or not starting, but continuing to create a completely new life in a completely new re relationship and in a situation where I would love, I really desire to create uh, an even bigger family with my dear Yulia. So by saying that i interrupted myself rude of me towards myself and i completely forgot what i was saying before yulia can you help me please or masha <laughs> Mary, please I'd love to help you, but I, uh, you know, jump or uh, in my internet, the internet is jumping. So uh, I joined when you like on the last part of your conversation. Right, right. Okay, so I can't remember uh, what it was. So there's another question: How to love and recognize yourself easier? Um. Well, just choose it. Stop judging yourself. And what would it be like if you were as kind, if not even kinder to yourself, than you are kind to everybody else around you? I go into self-judgment as well many times. And I have to admit and recognize and acknowledge that I'm doing it less and less, actually. Um, except when I do it more and more. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I judge myself and I realize that that makes my universe a lot smaller and judgment always creates and gratitude always, sorry, judgment always destroys <laughs> and gratitude always creates. So what do you choose? Yes, we're talking about how to earn more money. And uh, we were also talking about, uh, well, that's, I think we were done. We we're going 
on the next question of how to love and recognize yourself. So yes, that's where I was going. So if you're judging yourself, you cannot love yourself and receive yourself. You can't do that because you're judging yourself. So look at all the points where you're actually where you can actually be grateful for you without judging you. Rather than judging you, go, okay, what am I grateful about me right now? And write it down on a piece of paper. 10 lines, 10 things that you're grateful for, for you. And 10 things, it can be included in those, those 10 things, also 10 things that, or things that are, that you're grateful for in your life. People, things, adventures, whatever. Anything that you're grateful for. And then you start shifting your energy from the energy of judgment to the energy of gratitude, which will allow you to receive more of you and you actually to love yourself. I hope that uh, answered that question. And then you have we have another question. If I could have it translated, Julia, that would be great. Otherwise, I'm I'm trying Google Translate. Let's see what it says. Are situations being created lately that distract you from creating money and your great life? Uh, there is a feeling that there is so much going on there is no way for oneself and creation to something to grow, I guess. Uh, well, for me, personally, yes, that does have an influence in me distracting myself from creating my life. And it's also mental masturbation that I go into sometimes and I use the distractor implants. And if you don't know what they are, uh, it's explained in the foundation class that both Yuli and I facilitate. And uh, we're actually coming to Russia both to facilitate them. So um, do yourself a favor and choose a foundation class from Access Consciousness because those classes always create something way greater, even in uh, my life and Yulia's life by facilitating them. So whatever you do, don't choose it. And um, so we use these things called distractor implants that are things that distract us from actually creating a life. And it's actually us that put it in place so that we don't grow more and so that we remain stuck in this reality of um, being average, of being uh, little, of being small, of fitting into a little box that is not even your box. It's everybody else's box that they want to live in. So can you please let them live in their little boxes and not buy into the lies that they are trying. They're not even trying to feed you that you are receiving with your big antennas. Do, do, do. <laughs> do we have any more questions? And actually, um, um, I don't know if we're done with that question. Natasha, are you, are you happy with that answer that I gave? And we have another question in the meantime, which I love. I love that we have so many questions today. And I love the next question. So Natalia, are you done with that question? Are you happy or do you have something else that you would like to ask me? Okay, so I go into the next question, which is, why did I choose Russia? Very good question. First of all, before meeting Yulia, I had been to Russia many times, never to St. Petersburg, but always in Moscow and never nowhere else. And I really always enjoyed being in Russia. It's a country that attracted me a lot. And then I met Yulia. And I wanted to discover St. Petersburg. I wanted to discover more of Russia. I wanted to discover more of Russian culture. And, um, and I fell in love with it. And coming from Europe in a period like this, I realized another thing. With the sanctions that 
the United States and Europe chose to put against Russia. They thought that they would hurt Russia's economy. And what I thought about that now is that, no, you're not actually hurting Russia's economy. You're actually hurting Russian people's economy. So that's not really kind either, no matter what your point of view is about what's going on. And then I realized when I came to Russia that Russia doesn't have any financial problems. Russia has a lot of money. They have gas. They have electricity. They have everything that's required. Everything works. Everything functions properly. The streets are clean. If you go around in Rome, except for the center, the streets, well, now they're a little bit dirtier because we have a new mayor. But until a couple of months ago, it was hell. It, they're so dirty. And if we talk about the streets, there's so many holes in most of the streets that riding a motorbike is like, uh, 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 like that all the time. Whereas in Russia, the roads are beautiful. The motorways are amazing. And I just love it. And there's so many varieties of different foods from India to Mexico to Georgia to whatever you want. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat earlier or later than Italy. You can order food at home, which you can do in, in Italy as well, with Deliveroo and whatever else they're called. But uh, you don't have the same variety. And also here you can get gross. I mean, in Russia, you can get grocery and other things delivered to you at home. Here you just have to go to shops. I actually enjoy going to shops, but I also enjoy having the choice. Do I want to go to a small shop, to the butcher's shop, which I still miss because in Italy we have them, but in most countries in Europe, they don't exist anymore. You don't have the butcher. You don't have the fishmonger. You don't have, uh, you know, those small businesses that are intimate and they do a good job and whatever. Most of it is just being put in supermarkets, which is very impersonal. And most of the time, the quality is not half as good. Here we have the, the fruit and vegetable vendors. And we pick the one where we go because then we always go to that one because they will tell us what is actually good and what is bad. In the supermarket, they will never do that. So those are my things that made me choose Russia and made me fall uh, in love with Russia um, so much. And then also, I love Yulia. I'm in love with Yulia. I don't know if you noticed. Does it show that I'm in love with Yulia? Does it really show? <laughs> I think it's quite obvious. And um, so uh, I would like to spend more time with her in Russia. We just bought an apartment there together. Uh, well, it's actually Yulia that bought it and I'm contributing somehow. Um, and I hope I'll be able to contribute a lot more very, very soon. And um, I would love to spend more time with her family because I adore her family. I mean... Everyone that I know in that family is so amazing and so wonderful and they're so kind to me and they welcome me with open arms in the family, which is amazing. It's really amazing. I'm just about to cry with gratitude, my God. And um, you know the funny thing? I have more friends in Russia now and I've only been there for about six, not even six months in total in a year. I have more friends in Russia than I have in Italy, in England in Sweden, in France, and in Spain, all together. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's people that I know have my back. We can discuss about different things. And uh, they're kind. They don't judge me. And uh, with some of them, we get I get to create with. And uh, I just love Russian people. There is a little thing that... It's not a problem, and that's what we discussed with Yulia today as well, is that um, there is a difference in communication between Latin people like Italians or Spanish or French people and Russian people. And it can be due to the weather, because in Russia it's way colder than in Latin countries. And uh, it can also be because um, of, uh, you know, what Russia was before and, uh, you know, you... Most Russian people, I'm not saying you, but a lot of Russian people lived through uh, hard times and difficult times and whatever. So people in Russia tend to not speak that much. And some of them speak more than others. Some of them speak a lot. And some of them speak almost nothing. And also it's a way of saying things because 
Russian people are more direct, which makes more sense, actually. So um, if you're at a restaurant or even at the dinner table with your loved one and you say, uh, hey, darling, would you like some more of this? You know, a Russian person will just say no. In Italy or in Spain or in France or in England, they would be taking like, why is he or she being that rude to me? What have I done? What's what's going on here? Why is she so abrupt? Because we would say, no, thanks, darling. Thank you very much. Which for me is easy to say and it's kinder and it creates another energy. But at the same time, I see Russians people point of view of like, hey, I just want to say I don't want anything. So I just say no. It's simple as that. It's, I'm not putting any feelings or emotions into that. You ask me for a question. I give you the answer. Don't start mentally masturbating again that I'm being unkind to you when I'm not. I'm just saying what I don't want, that I don't want it. So you see how this reality puts us all in the polarity of this way is the right way to do it. That's the wrong way to do it. And the other way around. When in actual fact, there is no right or wrong way. It's actually learning to understand each other's languages and languages of all types, not just verbal languages. Does that make sense, guys? Oh, baby, hi. Hi. <laughs> cool. So if we don't have any more <laughs> questions, and if you guys are happy with this, I would like to say a few more words. Is that... Um, most probably starting next week, I will be continuing these calls. But as you probably understand, I cannot continue them for free because I would love to pay my team and I would love to pay myself as well. And I think you can you can uh, understand that. And I'm not planning to, to uh, make it expensive. I'm going to talk to my team and choose a price that uh, is uh, reasonable for everybody. And... Um, uh, and then we'll put the price up. We'll be contacting you ladies, telling you about the price or maybe putting it somewhere or maybe creating a chat. I don't know. I'll talk to, to Masha how to create that. And, uh, and then I hope you choose it and be with us to carry on uh, this conversation. Does that work for you guys? Give me a thumbs up if it works for you, please. Oh, no. All of you have their camera switched off except for you again. <laughs> <laughs> just put a yes or a хорошо in the chat <laughs> put it now because otherwise I'm falling asleep <laughs> and Anastasia спасибо okay I think we're done. So um, thank you very much, everybody here. Both of you that are here online that I'm truly grateful for. All of you stayed until the end. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And as you see, this is a conversation that can carry on on so many different topics, so many different subjects. And as I said on the first call, when something comes up in between now and the next call, please write it down in your phone, in a note or whatever, so that you actually have some questions or more questions to ask during the next calls, okay? And uh, the next calls are gonna be access to consciousness calls because they're gonna be closed calls. And uh, so I will be able to do facilitations uh, that are longer and I can, you know, do all the necessary thing and uh, do, run the clearings um, that I couldn't do today. But if there's something that popped up for you now or that pops up for you now that you would like to have clarity on, please go, let me try and get the link now so I can put it in the, in the chat. Um, one second. And if you go on that page, and you can actually translate it to Russian as well in the website as well as well. Um, here it is, I'll put this link. And there you choose uh, your session. And as I said before, the 15 minute session is totally free of charge. Okay, there is the link. 
please uh, save it somewhere, copy and paste it somewhere, or just click on the link now and save that page in your browser afterwards, and then you can save it on your browser, okay? So uh, I hope you're happy, and I would like to thank very, very much my wonderful team for these calls. Yulia, you're fantastic, but your internet sucked today. <laughs> and you're still fantastic. And uh, Masha, you're great as always. I'm so glad and so grateful for you to creating so many things with me, and both of you, actually. So looking forward to seeing all of you and more. If you enjoyed this, please share the link when we put it on uh, on YouTube. And uh, also um, tell your friends about it. Tell them to join us. Share the links. And for the next ones, it's not going to be the same link as now. It's not. And uh, yes, it's probably going to be. Well, let's see how we do it with the payment and with all those things. I'll discuss it with uh, with Masha. OK, does that work for you? Cool. In the meantime, I adore you all. Truly grateful for you. I hope this was a contribution. And uh, I'm coming to Russia very soon, I hope. I'm starting the process for my visa already today. <laughs> so in about two, three weeks, I should have my visa ready. Let's see. Well, three weeks, I think. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And see you next time. Uh, hopefully both online on the continuation of these calls. So you actually get to see me going from going all the way down under, not having any money, being away from Yulia, total disaster, blah, 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 judging myself, blah, into actually creating something even greater. Okay, if you want to be, or maybe totally failing, I don't know. I don't think so somehow, because I know I'm a potent creator and I know I'm magic, but you're not, you can't do that. Only I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> not true uh so if you want to follow that journey i think that we will all learn through that journey and i think uh jumping on the next calls and i don't know how many it's going to be if it's going to be three four of them or if it's going to be 25 of them or if it's going to be a longer program no idea we'll see how it goes and we'll follow the energy thank you so much and looking forward to you soon Bye bye paka paka <laughs>